On the 2nd of August 2005, Rubens Barrichello announced to the media that this would be his last year racing for Ferrari in Formula 1. It was a partnership that had not lasted very long considering that Barrichello went on to be the most experienced driver in F1, however it hadn't been unsuccessful. He'd taken 8 wins in his 6 seasons along with a pretty much guaranteed podium every race. In a way he was very like Valtteri Bottas as he was coupled with arguably the best driver on the grid in the best team on the grid. And as well as that, both Valtteri and Barrichello were completely shafted by their teams. So, this is the story of how Ferrari failed Rubens Barrichello. Now, I'm not going to go through every single race result of every single season, because I want to keep this video somewhat interesting, so instead I put the question to you to let me know which instances you think stand out to you as the times when Ferrari really threw Rubens under the bus. The best comment I got on the community post I put up was this one, which gives way more examples than I ever could think of, so let's go through them, shall we? Now, in my last two videos I had a few people write comments complaining that I used this format of text on screen too much, so in this video I wanted to use a slightly different format. Yeah. Now, I'm too lazy to write a script for the bits of this video that my face is in, so I'm sort of just going off bullet points and memory. If I get any of the information wrong in those bits, then I'm very sorry, and if you want to write me an angry comment about it, then you have my permission to fuck. Now, Rubens' first season with Ferrari in 2000 was fairly average, you know, it wasn't a big sort of year where something went wrong, and it wasn't a big year where something went right. It was just a year. Now, Michael Schumacher was obviously the top driver in the in the standings and also in Ferrari because, you know, he was better. People knew that. That's sort of obvious. In the first three races, Michael took every single win, while Rubens' results were a second place, a retirement, and a fourth place. So, not bad, but not great. This same trend sort of followed until Austria, where Michael Schumacher had a string of three retirements. On the last of these three, Barrichello took his first win for the Scuderia in the German Grand Prix. After that, results would go back to being mediocre, but hey, he took a win in his first season with Ferrari, which is more than a lot of people could do, so good job. At the end of the season, Schumacher obviously took the title, and Barrichello was in fourth. So again, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. That's a decent first season, if you ask me. The 2001 Malaysian Grand Prix is the first true example of Ferrari failing Rubens Barrichello. The first of many, as you'll learn in this video. Now, as Formula 1 races go, the Malaysian Grand Prix of 2001 was a pretty crazy one in its own right, so let's have a quick expose, shall we? Michael Schumacher had taken his sixth consecutive pole position at the circuit, with Rubens just a tenth behind him in second, as was sort of the norm. The race started with an aborted start, so after a second formation lap, we got underway and Schumacher got away well. Unfortunately, the same could not be said for Barrichello. Schumacher pulled away from Barrichello after his little incident, but then the rain started to fall, as it often does in Malaysia. Both Ferraris were still fairly close to one another on track, and when they both hit the same patch of water mixed with oil from Olivier Panis's car, they decided to take part in a bit of synchronised near-death experiences. Through all this mess, Barrichello got past Michael Schumacher, which would confuse Ferrari later on. Because of the heavy rain and its disturbance, the safety car was deployed, which allowed all the teams to make a pit stop, including Ferrari. So do you remember in the Sake Grand Prix where Mercedes put Valtteri Bottas' tyres on George's car? Yeah. So apparently the team in red got confused about the fact their golden driver wasn't in the lead, so they just assumed that when two Ferraris showed up into the pits, the first one on the scene would be Shumi. They also took the 1 minute and 12 seconds Barrichello was sitting still as a chance to clean half the Malaysian gravel out of the side pods, but even so, any pit stop over a minute is a pretty bad one if you ask me. Anyway, seeing as it was a safety car, the two Ferraris caught up to the pack and Schumacher, after having had a normal length pit stop, was right behind Barrichello. Schumacher was quick to take the lead, and then both he and Rubens deployed the Ferrari tax and steamrolled the field. So, to start and finish second was not a bad day in the office for Rubens, but you can't help but think that if Ferrari didn't botch his pit stop, he could have had a chance of getting his only win of 2001. Still, could be worse. The 2002 Austrian Grand Prix was arguably the worst race in modern F1 history, not because it was a bad race or anything, I think it was a pretty good one, but because of the result. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then let me give you a quick rundown. Rubens' season had started with three retirements from the first three races, then a second place finish, and then a did not start. So his season wasn't exactly going fantastically. For the Austrian Grand Prix, Rubens Barrichello had taken pole and he was leading all the way through the race. But then on the last lap, Ferrari issued team orders and Michael Schumacher got the win from Rubens Barrichello after he slowed down through the last corner. Now, this was actually the second time that Rubens had had to let Michael Schumacher through in Austria, but this was the first time that it was for the win, and therefore this is much more controversial. Not, not even controversial, because everyone hated it, but it was wrong. It was made all the more confusing by the fact that Michael was already dominating the championship and like really didn't need the points, whereas Rubens was nowhere, you know? He could have done with a win to boost his spirits in the season and just sort of validate the fact that he was driving a good race and a good season. After this race, team orders were banned, which stopped exactly nobody, and as I've already mentioned, this is widely regarded as the worst race in F1 history. 
Nice. In 2003, Rubens was on for a maiden win in Interlagos before Ferrari f***ed up again. And I'm not talking about them sacrificing him for team orders this time, I'm talking about the fuel system deciding not to fuel, which meant that despite getting pole and leading most of the way, Rubens lost a maiden win in his home country on lap 47. Now, considering that Ferrari was supposed to be the most reliable car on the grid in this era, Rubens was pretty unlucky, but I'm still putting the blame on Ferrari here so I can put more content into this video. Anyway, I don't really have much to say about this one, except for the fact that it's not not just Ferrari who've given Rubens bad luck in Interlagos, as this was the ninth consecutive Brazilian Grand Prix retirement from him, and a tenth in his 11 races thus far which isn't great. The 2004 US Grand Prix was another one where Rubens Barrichello had the edge on Schumacher, which is a rare occasion, but Schumacher got past Barrichello by some sort of cheeky tactics at the end of the safety car period on lap 7. Now obviously this wasn't as controversial as Austria 2002 where they literally gave Michael the win, but it was still very close to legality from Schumacher, and if he'd mistimed the throttle even by a slight different amount, then it would have been one that he'd had to give back. Then obviously because he was driving a better race than Schumacher, Barrichello was then stuck behind him for the rest of the race, but ultimately Schumacher took the win. This was yet another time that Barrichello should have won, but didn't because because maybe, maybe this wasn't Ferrari's fault, nor was it Schumacher's, but it was unlucky and mm, I don't know, I think he should have been given the win. Maybe I'm just biased. The 2005 US Grand Prix was pretty bad too, if you ask me. The race was controversial anyway, as you probably already know, with only six cars starting of it, two of which were the Ferraris. Barrichello again had the lead and Michael Schumacher was again in second. Okay, so uh, correction, that's my bad, sorry. Uh, Michael started the race ahead, Barrichello was behind, but then Barrichello stopped first because it, this was the year when you didn't have to stop for tyres, but you did have two for fuel. So Barrichello stopped first, got new fuel and all of that, and then Michael Schumacher had his pit stop a little bit later, and Michael came out of the pits behind Barrichello, and obviously that's not to do with an undercut on new tyres because technically Barrichello's car was now heavier, so Barrichello just drove better laps than Michael at this stage of the race, uh, and caught up to Michael. But then as Michael was leaving the pits, he forced Rubens off. Rubens then caught up again, but Ferrari didn't allow Rubens to pass. This was sort of like a Ferrari version of Multi 21, and there were only six cars on track, which makes like no sense at all. Again, not as bad as the others on this list, but again, worth a mention for content's sake. The 2005 Monaco Grand Prix, Schumacher squeezed Barrichello for sixth, which just wasn't necessary, especially seeing as they weren't fighting for the championship. I mean, they were fighting for sixth in the race, but I mean, Ferrari weren't anywhere that year. Plus, obviously, they were teammates, so I don't know. It wasn't fair, but again, this wasn't Ferrari. And something I've learned from researching this video is that actually, you know, people sort of attribute Ferrari to sort of have failed Rubens Barrichello's career, but actually they sort of haven't. There were definitely instances where he should have been treated better, but isn't that the case with everyone? Now, obviously Michael was the faster driver in the team, I think there's no doubt about that. But even so, it did feel that whenever Rubens was faster, he wasn't allowed to be faster, or wasn't allowed to take the result, and that's sort of the reason I'm making this video. Sure, he still took a few wins here and there, but compared to Michael, who was winning everything, there was nothing, so why didn't they just let him take a few more wins, you know? Michael would still have won the championship, even with these results having been left as they were. But it just, I don't know, it just sort of feels a bit wrong. Were Michael not in the team, Barrichello would have won probably two championships. But that's not Michael Schumacher's fault, that's not Ferrari's fault, that's just how F1 works. But long story short, Schumacher was going to win these championships anyway, and it wouldn't have hurt for Ferrari to let Rubens Barrichello have a few wins more. Jeez, that's quite bright now, isn't it? Ultimately, me moaning isn't going to change a thing, and to be honest, I think looking back at this stuff in retrospect makes it easier to jump to conclusions. Ferrari nowadays seem like a much better team to race for, and you can see in their current lineup that there isn't a clear favourite. If they dominate this year, then we might see some favouritism start to creep in, most likely towards Charles Leclerc, but overall, I don't think it'll be as bad as it was for Rubens. He was obviously not the best driver ever, and like I mentioned at the start of this video, he was very similar to Valtteri Bottas in how the team treated him. However, Mercedes only ever used team orders when they needed to, whereas Ferrari seemed to use team orders purely as a way to establish a hierarchy within the team which can't have been nice to be involved in. But yeah, thank you for putting up with another load of John Warren waffle. I feel like this video wasn't as exciting as I'd sort of planned it to be, so sorry again. But yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe, like, all of that stuff, and follow me on Twitter. It'll be there somewhere, I think. Bye.